Hi guys, it's Mac and Pussy here and we're back with another song reaction and today we are doing the song Return of the Jedi by Ruben. Now, I know Ruben because Ruben were a kind of post-hardcore emo band that were coming up in the early 2000s around the same time as bands like Biffy Clyro and my, my own band. We're gonna go in and we're gonna check this song out because I don't know this song and we're gonna see if it's any good. Here's the problem that I've got straight off the bat with Ruben, is that I know one album, Race Cars, Race Car Backwards. Every odd numbered song on it is very, very good, and every even numbered song on it is absolute nonsense. And they've got the problem of, they've got songs that are emotionally fucking brilliant, with really, really good, like really good lyrics, and fantastic singing and musicianship. And then they've got songs like Freddy Krueger, where they're just oh, taking a fucking piss. The fact that this song is called Return of the Jedi kinda makes me feel like it might be one of their piss takey songs. We're gonna go in and we're gonna check it out. And then we're gonna see how it lands on the emo scale. So I am at this point on a fucking knife edge. It's one of the more serious songs, so I don't mind that too much. When they first, when the band kicked in, they were doing that riff at first, and I expect them to come in with just that same riff heavier, with the massive fucking drums and everything. But instead, they went for like the kind of China symbol type groovy drum beat instead, which was just really, really cool. And then they made the really weird choice for him to do his screaming over the top of that. I've always thought that uh, Jamie Lemon's scream was a bit rough around the edges. I don't think that's where his best vocal abilities lie. I think he's better when he's shouting because he sings in his accent and he's got quite a he's quite a, he's got quite a good kind of cool tone to his singing, but when he's pushing it higher and a bit more gravelly that's when it really excels, which he started doing at this point where I've just paused it. Yeah, so far this is pretty decent and it seems like the song's all about the struggles of being in a band, which I know a lot of their second album was about that as well. It was a lot of how it was difficult for them to be. They've got a song where they spoke about how it was difficult for him to be working a full-time proper job and at the same time then watching the automatic get a number one single when they came up with the automatic and he feels like they're as good if not better than the automatic and they're the same type of music so how come the automatic's managing to get massive and they're not which could be better and a lot of the songs is about him singing about how bitter he is about this kind of stuff i kind of relate to that quite a lot because when we were my band was at a point where it was almost about to get somewhere and it was about to kind of start getting kind of big and instead I then watched a bunch of bands who freely admit that they were influenced by my band and were coming up at the same time then completely surpass us and go on to much bigger and better things and I had to go and start working a full-time job to support myself and I just kind of sat back like a little bit bitter and a little bit kind of 
Like, why the fuck? We're better than them. Kind of attitude. Like, you kind of need to get over it a bit, which obviously he's done. His solo career's doing pretty well. I get the anger behind it. I get the frustration. And, yeah, so the, this song, it kind of resonates with me a wee bit. And if you think it's so, so, you don't know. That one's fucking brilliant. You know what was fucking brilliant about that part there, right? That guitar playing was not perfect at all. There was a whole bunch of fucking bum notes in there and they just kept it in because it added a bit of realism to it and it added a bit more kind of grit. Normally, with a band, when they try to add grit into a song, they do it through the vocals and they'll have the rest of the music perfect. Whereas these guys are happy to go, you know what, that take, that take's good enough because it adds a bit more kind of realism. And I'll, yeah, I like that. This is exactly my cup of tea. I fucking love this song. This is exactly the screaming. See the screaming I'm always talking about on the channel, but I like this kind of screaming. This is exactly the kind of screaming that I'm talking about. I love I love that whole screaming into that next part where it did the kind of the singing alongside it. That was gorgeous. This is feels very much like kind of glass jaw cross with your code name is Milo. Two bands I fucking love. I should maybe maybe put my prejudices to one side and actually check out the rest of their albums because it turns out this song is banging. And then here's the Biffy back. Because <laughs> Biffy does this in all of their fucking songs. Oh. Well, how's it about to come down and I'll explain? Get yourself to London on the train and I'll just send you home again. Well, how's it about to come down and I'll explain? Get yourself to London on the train and I'll just send you home again. Well, how's it about to come down and I'll explain? Get yourself to London on the train. Fucking thing in there is gorgeous. I like a job there, which I am able. Put shoes on my feet, food on my table. Those nine to fivers in a pretty stable. But I get my wedges from my record label.
Okay. Have they even repeated the part yet? This song's like... You know, this song's seven and a half minutes long and they've not repeated anything as far as I can tell. Total fucking dynamic switch ups all over the place. That's mental. I can see why this would not be everybody's cup of tea. But for me, mm. I like that they're not repeating sections thing because it kind of reminds me a little bit of Weed and Cambria and also like a lot of stuff that my own band used to do. This is. You guys don't understand, right? This is giving me extreme nostalgia vibes. <laughs> this is making me remember my own music career. I'm just thinking back fondly. And. These guys might not like it, and I don't care. I'm from a very specific fucking music scene in the UK, and we play the very specific type of music, and I love that. And uh, this is giving this is giving me the feels. <clears throat> it's giving me the feels. to get like to fucking deep in the in the weeds when i left the band like the first time I, I i left the band for a while and then i went back for a wee while and then i had to leave again when i first left the band i didn't have a job and i don't know it was like so we had we had got a record deal um we'd got offered a record deal we jumped at the first record deal we got offered like the band's from like a tiny, tiny village in the middle of Scotland, and it's like an it's like a mining village where it's very poor. There's not a lot of opportunities out there. We were four guys. It was that cl fucking classic cliche where it was like four fucking outcasts at school who'd got together, who were friends, and just say to get into a garage and just fucking write music together. We did it because we loved writing. Like I, I was probably the least interested in the actual music writing like I just wanted to hang about with my friends and but then like I, I, I loved the songs that my best friend wrote I thought they were fucking incredible I still think he's the best singer songwriter that on the planet if I hadn't been in that band that would still be my favorite band I loved it and I loved being a part of it but it got to the point where like we'd released the EP through the record label and there was no like push for it or anything so it didn't go anywhere and we we did some tours but we paid for those tours like we toured Germany but we never made any money all the money went back into fucking getting us to the next gig and by the time we got home we were just as fucking skint as we were before we left because I didn't have a job I was living off welfare then he had a serious case of writer's block and it got to the point where 
I couldn't sustain myself. I was eating like a meal a week. It was just, it was too difficult to just be in a fucking band where in the British music scene, you've got to sell tickets to be able to play. You can't just turn, like you don't get a gig and you go up and you play. They, you get the gig and then they give you 50 tickets and they tell you that the tickets are eight pounds a piece. If you sell a hundred pounds worth of tickets, you get to play. But if you don't sell a hundred pounds worth of tickets and you want to play, you've got to give the venue a hundred pounds. And trying to convince people to go from that tiny, tiny village where there was no money and there was no opportunities to head into like the big cities to then go and watch a band that they didn't know play was impossible. So you ended up having to pay to play these venues constantly in the hopes that you would turn up and play well enough to a attract new fans who would be willing to come and see you. But the Scottish music scene, the people that turn up, the local gigs, they're there to see their friends. They're not there to see any other band. They don't care about any other bands. It was just getting really, really difficult. And I ended up in the supermarket working full time just to try and keep some food in my fucking belly. When you're working full time and it's a drudgerous job like that, trying to then maintain a passion for creativity is fucking tough. And it just drains out of you to the point where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I don't, I'm working. I can't come to the band practices because I'm working. And then that was creating tensions amongst the band and it was just, <clears throat> everything that this guy's singing about right now is just fucking just reminded me of like so much fucking shit this is one of those songs where if, if you guys weren't watching me right now I would be a bit of a broken man but because I get it then it's fucking horrible That was, yeah, that was kind of stunning. I kind of fucking love that song. Um, that ending was just powerful and also fucking heartbreaking. See, I knew it was gonna go one of two ways, right? Because he was either he was either gonna sing a song about Star Wars, right? Because it's called Dawn of the Jedi. He was gonna sing a song about fucking Star Wars, or he was gonna go the other route where he was gonna sing a really personal fucking song. And I'm really glad it was that one. Because that was kind of amazing. Putting my fucking personal shit to the side. How emo was that song? There's absolutely no point in even discussing it. To be totally honest with you. It is straight up there. It was about as emo as you can possibly get. I don't want to hear anything about it. It just was, right? And if you didn't get any emotional connection to that song, then use a stone cold dead inside and I can't help you with that. That guys was Return of the Jedi by Ruben. I have been Marco Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time.